Hi there everybody, I'm Fred Thomas and you are watching All Things Bike and today we are speaking with John Brooking, Certified Instructor at Cycling Savvy. John. Hi Fred. Welcome to the show. Thank you, glad to be here. Hey, I gotta ask you, I've seen the website and from what I can see and what I've read, Cycling Savvy is not your ordinary bicycle educational program, safety service. What is it? Yep. Give us the rundown. Well, um, it's kind of summed up, I think, in our motto, which is empowerment for unlimited travel. Right on. The idea is that um, you can go anywhere by bike with a few simple, essential bits of knowledge and skill. Not that hard to learn. Yeah. Things, you know, you might pick up over some years of experience, but if you want to come and take a class, kind of get a jump start on that, even better. Yeah, I mean, you, and you're using some different words, um, knowledge, skill, I and mean, then these things don't pop up in your standard um, program. What, what do they mean when they say knowledge? And Skills. Well, knowledge of things like what the law says about where bicyclists ride on the road. So rules of the road. Rules of the road. Yeah. Um, you know, beyond the, the typical driving rules of the road, but also for bicyclists. You mm -hmm. know, like when I first started doing, you know, riding to work, I was like, well, I, I know I'm supposed to kind of obey the same rules, but yeah. what does that mean? Like at intersections, how far out? am I supposed to be or not? What am I allowed to do? Right, right, right. So, and, and, and that's where the skills come in, um, I yeah, guess. Yeah, and skills, simple, fairly simple skills, like riding in a straight line. Right. Um, especially if you're making turn signals or uh, turning your head to look behind you for traffic. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, basics about how to use your gears efficiently and stopping without going over the handlebars. Right, right, right. You know, so does it, does it, is it originally, was it originally set up for commuters? Uh, give us the background on cycling savvy. And, well, I think, I think the, I, I think the focus is um, traffic riding. Right. You know, that's not completely all it is, mm -hmm. but that's really the, the focus. We don't, get into um, mechanical skills, you know, things you can pick up from bike shops or right. other places. We don't get into you know, nutrition for long rides. Right. Um, and this is part of what distinguishes right. it from some other cycling curricula as well. Right, right, I see. Well, um, but it's a, it's a national organization. Yes. Isn't that right? And, and how did you end up affiliated with it? And, and what's the background there? Well, um, I started teaching classes in 2011, I mm -hmm. believe. And at that time, I already did have a few uh, traffic or bicycle safety education curricula, uh, credentials, right, right, I should say. Um, but I had, had met online some of the people who were developing this curriculum, mm -hmm. um, especially Carrie Caffrey, who is the graphic designer. Uh, she designed this nice jersey yeah. and she designed all the illustrations and animations and video. Uh, that's in the the classroom presentation. Right, right. Um, so it sounded it sounded pretty exciting. Yeah, and and um, you said again curriculum, and and um, so there, the way I understand it, there are three stages to to um, the program if you sign right. up and, and and participate. Right. Um, elaborate on on those and, and how that works. Okay. Well, we have three sessions, and you're not required to take all three, but you get a little price break if you sign up for all okay. three. Um, and you still don't have to take them all at once if you sign up for all three. Right. Uh, classroom, skills class in a parking lot, and then we go out on the road. Right, right, right. Well, um, and, and, uh, do you teach the classes, for example? I, mean, I do, yes. So you get a room together, and, uh, mm -hmm. and how many people, 10, 15? Or? We can handle, well, um, typically I, I can handle up to about a dozen right. um, in a in a room, in a little room. Right, right, right. Um, we have had instructors at other places around the country who've, who've set up whole auditoriums for people to come, wow. you know, kind of like mass. Yeah, yeah, I'll say. Well, I mean, yeah. What kind of questions do they ask? Um, uh, well, well the, the, the classroom curriculum covers, like I, I mentioned first, the, the laws, right, you know, right. what the laws say, and what the common crash types are with mm -hmm. cars and how to avoid them, right. uh, and then progresses beyond that to techniques that you can use to make your riding just a little easier and more comfortable beyond mm -hmm. just simple avoid crashes. Right, right. Like, uh, um, well, one thing it, it seems is that most of the people in the class are adults and they're not, mm -hmm. they're not kids. They're not, um, right. they're not saying this is how you put the helmet on or maybe yeah. you are. I mean, yeah. How is it to deal with adults in this kind of environment? Well, um, you have to respect that you're teaching adults. Right. So, so we try not to, you know, just lecture at them. Right. You know, questions are, are great and, and even we're encouraged to pose content in terms of questions. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you, 
how would this work? How would you want to do this? Yeah, yeah. and and um, I mean, it's a it must be a challenge. Um, does um, I mean, do they do they? I mean, when they turn up, are they afraid or, or are they curious or? I mean, what are the what are the sort of the icebreakers that you've experienced and, and how did um, it end up? Well, we we have a variety of cyclists who come and take the class. Mm -hmm. um, we try and and go from someone who just basically knows how to steer and brake but doesn't know anything else. Right. Um, but we also um, can be relevant to club riders or yeah. or racers, you know, which I'm not as much personally. I'm more of a utilitarian rider, hence yeah, the blue perfect. jeans. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, A to B. That's that's exactly. most, that's yeah. most people, right? I mean, right. Yeah. It's most people. Yeah. I mean, I think we're recognizing that the one aspect of bicycling on roads that most people are most mm -hmm. afraid of is car traffic. Yeah. So well, that's what we're trying to overcome. I mean, are there are there statistics from Maine that you're aware of that you use to, to sort of break the ice or, or inform the, the, the students that, that you can share? Um, I don't have a lot of main specific statistics at my fingertips, but, but we have general, yeah. we have a, a section on statistics f from national sources, mm -hmm. and and one initial question we ask is of all the crashes that are severe enough to send bicyclists to the hospital, mm -hmm. what do you think is the biggest cause of those crashes? Yeah, so. and, and and I would think it was the door. Is that right? I mean, mm -hmm. if if you were asking me that question in the uh -huh. classroom, I would say uh -huh. it was the door. Yeah, it, actually, it's solo falls. Just people falling off the Just falling, people falling. You know, yeah, so yeah. crashes with cars is kind of like second on the list. Right, right, right. Okay, so... Um, so 40% of, of these crashes right. are solo falls. Controlled flight into terrain or <laughs> yeah. controlled ride into terrain. Like, yeah, I yeah, know. Well, I can understand that. Um, well, um, I mean, are there are there any um, of your favorite stories or experiences from, from having run the, the um, program here in Maine? Yeah. Um, there, there is a one student that particularly stands out in my mind, mm -hmm. um, and she came to me um, riding a recumbent tricycle, which she was because she has a degenerative nerve disorder okay. that causes lesions, mm -hmm. you know, on her brain and in her in her neck stem, right. you know. So by the by the time she moved to Portland, she had given up driving a car. Mm -hmm. She had balance issues, right. and and she had gone completely deaf. Oh no. But she was walking down the street one time and mm -hmm. passing a bike shop and thought, I wonder if I can ride a recumbent bicycle. Good for so her. So they set her up with a recumbent trike. Right. And um, she, she went out around her, her apartment on the West End, you know, mm -hmm. went a few blocks, mm -hmm. but realized that she'd really like to know more about what she was doing. Right. So um, she contacted me by email. And we arranged for her to be able to take the classroom mm -hmm. by having a friend come along with her to transcribe what was being said. Right. And she was able to answer herself because she went deaf later in life, so she could still talk fairly right, well, right, but right. had to have someone write down what was right, being right, said. Right, right, so she could. Yep. Um, we, we didn't have her take the, the skills class and the tour because mm -hmm. that's more reliant on hearing what people are saying. Right. But right. I, I did spend time with her afterwards one-on-one. -on -one going out different places. Uh, we rode across the Casco Bay Bridge, wow, which was great. one place that she had been afraid of riding. Right. And for years afterwards on, on Facebook, I, I would see reports of her, you know, riding to Cape Elizabeth, riding to Falmouth, right you know, on. going to things she wanted to go to by bike. Right, right, and that's that's a great story, John, and, and, and it's a result of, of knowledge and, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and the information needed to break down the anxiety um, right. levels that, that might be there. Mm -hmm. um, you've got some great tips on, on how to negotiate traffic. Um, mm -hmm. One was situational awareness, which I guess applies to many things, but mm -hmm. th there was also um, communication. Um, can you mm -hmm. zero in on those two aspects, situational awareness and, and communication as it yep. relates for cyclists to, mm -hmm. to cars? Yeah, um, well, situational awareness can be about, well, it should be about pretty much everything that's going on, yeah. um, including any hazards that are coming up um, on the road. Right. You know, if you're riding more towards the, more towards the edge of the road, um, you know, potholes, sand, whatever coming up um, that might cause you to have to move out further. Yeah. Um, or a car pulling out of a driveway. Absolutely. You yeah. ask yourself, does that driver see me? Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. But also the the traffic that's going on around you at the time. Yeah, I mean that's uh, I mean I do that. I try to do that all the time. Mm -hmm. The car that's coming up is you yep. going to turn left? Um, right. And uh, our. Um, even the car that's parked on the side of the road, is that door going to open? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, how is that different from defensive driving, do you think? Or, or, or is, it, is, it, is, that, is that defensive bicycle um, driving? That you know, mindfulness that, that way is part of defensive bicycling. Right. Um, lane position is a big part, another big part of defensive bicycling. Sure, yeah. Yeah, well, elaborate on that. I mean, okay, yeah. well, um, on my jersey, <laughs> okay. I actually have a diagram. <laughs> That shows oh, yeah. the the five um, yeah. biggest car bike crash causes, okay. which are um, getting doored, yeah. getting sideswiped. Those are between intersections, and at intersections, mm -hmm. uh, a right cross where someone passes or right right hook. They turn right. In they front turn of right you. in yeah. front of you. Yeah. Or a drive out where they're driving out of a driveway and they don't see you coming and they drive out in front mm -hmm. of you. Yeah. Or a left cross. They're coming the other way that's, and they turn left. That's a diabolical one. Across too. your path. Yeah. 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 And, and those can all be um, guarded against mm -hmm. by taking a more visible lane position. That's right. really kind of one of the big answers, ride right. big, we say. So that means uh, be visible, and, and mm -hmm. the best way to be visible is, is not to be too far over in the right lane. But right. And so what's the logic? If you're further out in the middle of the lane, then you're going to be seen. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing, the driver is going to sort of anticipate that you might be going straight. And, yeah, or, um, not or, not just seen as far as visibly, but relevant. We right, talk about right. being relevant. You yeah. know, if you're all the way over at the edge, it's harder for for motorists to tell what you're going to do. Right. And right. Yep. and there's this thing called inattentional blindness, where you're constantly filtering out things that aren't relevant to driving. Uh, if you're the cyclist or the driver. The dr well, if everyone. Everyone. <laughs> it happens to everyone, <laughs> but especially yourself. if you're driving a car, because the faster <laughs> yeah. you're going, yeah. the less you're paying attention to what's going on at the edge, and also that's the more true. distracted yeah. you are, I know. Well, the less you're paying attention to what's going on at the edge. The, that's the great. That's the the new drunk driving. That's the right. 21st century uh, drunk driving. That's is, right. Is distraction and, and right. oh look, there's my phone right now. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> it's it's uh, yeah. I mean, it's something that we're all worried about, and and uh, I, I I can't imagine how people can ride their bikes with earbuds and mm -hmm. and I guess drive with with earbuds. But um, you have a there was a, a notion that you expressed on the website, which was if you act like a driver, you're going to get treated like a driver. Mm -hmm. um, is is that what riding uh, riding big is mm -hmm. is is all about? Do you think? Um, yeah, it's. Riding like a driver is mm -hmm. using the same rules of the road, right. so you're predictable, and right. you know, and you'll get more respect too. Sure. You know, yeah. I've had motorists tell me, you know, thank you for using your turn signals. You know? Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 waving and and yeah. And, yeah. and acknowledging that and being friendly is right. I find that's a big icebreaker. Yeah. I mean, when there's a car that's in an intersection and they want to pull out, and if I Say I'm going straight, and then give them a wave. I mean, mm -hmm. hopefully that makes their day. It certainly, I, I think makes, so too. Makes my day. Yeah. Well, how how would I sign up? How do people go about signing up for the program? Well, there's a registration website, uh, register.cyclingsavvy.org, mm -hmm. and uh, my classes are listed in the Northern New England section. Okay. And I have one coming up on, I believe it's October 20th. It's a Friday, okay. in a few weeks from now. All right. So you can go there, and sign up, or you can send me an email. Oh, that's great, and so and it's all year round too. So it's not just summer. Spring yeah, or, um, I've started doing the classroom session very, you know, occasionally throughout the winter because mm -hmm. you can, you know, sure. just go to a classroom. Do the, class the on bike <laughs> stuff is only in the summer, right? Right, because it's Maine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, uh, it shouldn't stop us. We can we can do it in the summer. Well, it doesn't stop me from commuting, but it it seems to stop a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, anyway, John, thanks so much for for coming in and and giving us that overview. It's very informative and and very useful. Okay, you're welcome. So everybody, that was John Brooking of Cycling Savvy, and if you want to sign up um, or learn more, you can uh, Google Cycling Savvy and you will find everything you need to know there. Thanks so much for watching, that's all. We'll see you next time. All Things Bike with Fred Thomas is brought to you by Zentis, performance carbon wheels handmade in Austria for road and off-road riding. Zentis, next generation wheels. And Frame and Wheel eBay Bike Selling Services. Time, space, cash, pick three. And AD Bikes, the modern face of Austro-Daimler cycling and the bike company of the future.